Okay, so welcome back. So here we are with the uh, Traxxas again. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It has the lights as you can see up here in front. Uh, headlights, uh, uh, fog lights, it got brake lights. So as we move it, you'll see brake lights in the back, reverse lights in the rear. And this is my TRX-4M. So everything has come to a stop for me um, when installing actually the Endura 59 millimeter uh, shocks. And then I'll show you why. Uh, basically, uh, there's some things that um, you can try and modify so that the suspension's a little bit um, more compliant. So basically, there are all these little tabs in the back that you can actually move up to the front holes. So basically, they were back here with the screw, and I moved it forward so that there's actually a little bit of a forward cant up here. The front ones you can't really do. Um, I've heard that you can actually buy uh, independent or aftermarket uh, shock mounts, as well as also changing your chassis for different shock mounting points. But the problem with these shocks, uh, because they're so long, is finding out what kind of um, oil shock to use. So uh, with the suggestion of people on the forums, they said to use 30 weight. Um, I use 30 weight, but I guess because of all the things that I have on the, um, on the body, it's actually a little bit too heavy in the rear, so it kind of droops. Um, I am missing a rear spring cup as you can see here I have it on this side but not on this side and it's causing it to like sag on this side um, it does come with um, the Endura does come with uh, different springs and I think the other springs are a little bit heavier duty um, and with the suggestion of again those on forums they said to get the spring and you can actually stretch them so that they're elongated so that when you put it in it kind of raises it up but um, I just found that, yeah, it just doesn't sit right or doesn't um, articulate w how I want it to articulate. So meaning that um, it, it basically still kind of droops when I put the body on, as you can see here in the rear. So I'm not sure if it's actually the tires, the body, or if it's just a suspension or whatnot. So this is where I've actually stopped. I've also stopped... Uh, tinkering around with the um, with the the bead locks because I've noticed every time that I put it on and then I actually go on the the trails that the tire separates from the bead lock it comes out over here so no matter how tight I get these on uh, it always seems to separate I was gonna super glue it but I don't want to do that because I want to actually be able to change the tires um, as you can see, I have two different types of bead locks. This one I thought would be more secure because it's actually on the outer side of the rim. This one is just on the inner side of the rim. Um, so they have different looks to it. So just to test it out, I just try to put this one on the rear and it looks, although it looks a lot nicer. Um, again, this is just where I've stopped. Um, let's see here. What else did I actually put on this? So aside from the bead locks i'll go over some of the other things that i did install i do have like an all aluminum endura drive shaft front and rear um, it's pretty easy to put on um, basically there is set screws here that seems to back out if you don't use blue loctite or on the stock ones if you don't use like um uh, shrink tubing to cover that so it doesn't back out but i put uh, blue loctite on mine and it just adds a nice feature to it because it is aluminum. Um, I did, again, add some suspension pieces. So I do have the Endura 59 millimeter shocks. Uh, up front, I have like this steering bar to connect the front wheels. Um, supposedly, this is supposed to add a little bit more clearance. So as you turn, one of the issues is that if you turn full lock to lock, with this that the front tires actually come in contact with the with the body so 
one of the fixes is not only to get like a TQI remote to adjust your endpoints, but you can also adjust the that arm, which gives it actually more more range. So I guess it all depends on the size of the tires that you put on and everything. Uh, that'll give you that range. Again, if you have more clearance, the you, you know the better. But I think one of the the major benefits is that it's actually more direct. There'll be less flex because it is aluminum. Um, let's see here. What else did I have installed? Um, I do have installed front and rear diff covers in aluminum. So basically, just this adds weight. All of this actually adds weight when you add metal to the bottom of the chassis just to keep it more grounded. So there's more lower center of gravity. So as you climb or rock climb, uh, it doesn't want to tip because it's not top heavy. The only thing is that when you add all these aluminum parts, problem that I've been facing is that, yeah, it is, it's a lot heavier now. And um, another thing that I noticed too is that um, there is some torque steer so that when I actually accelerate or de uh, or go in reverse, um, especially when I put on the diff covers and I made sure that I didn't tighten the diff covers too tightly so that it doesn't uh, bind on the internal gears, but it seems to like wants to uh, tilt to one side to the other. So on acceleration, sometimes depending on which side gets traction, it'll lean to one side and if I go in reverse, it'll lean back in the other direction. So I noticed to alleviate that is to loosen the diff cover. So just to make sure that there is no uh, interference with the cover in the internal gears as it's, as it's turning. But um, that's another resolution that I haven't figured out yet. So um, the last thing that I did install was a Holmes motor. So I have, if you can see here on the bottom, I have a 80 turn, 60, a 66 turn, 80 size motor by Holmes, and it's added a lot of torque. So um, it's a lot smoother, more, a little bit more controllable. Uh, so it has a little bit more torque, as you can see. I'm able to crawl over things. It's my battery here for my GoPro and stuff. But yeah. I mean, it's a fun vehicle, but pretty much I installed everything that I've wanted to install on this. Not much more I can do. Um, I've seen some aftermarket body parts or covers that you can actually put on top uh, locally on Facebook. But I'm pretty much done with this. Uh, I'm not actually using it anymore. So I'm gonna have this up on Facebook for sale. Uh, posted it up for like $240. So I think that's pretty much a steal. Is it'll come with the TQI remote. Again, it's basically so that you can adjust your turning endpoints as well as your uh, acceleration uh, endpoints so you have your steering as well as your uh, throttle and braking the stock one is this one here uh, the TQI you can adjust manually here or you can actually use Bluetooth it's Bluetooth enable although I don't have my Bluetooth module installed um, I think I sold my Bluetooth module when I sold my um, Traxxas Max and my Haas. I think it was actually on my Max that I had it. So, so again, if you want to check me on Facebook, um, I am selling this out of Hawaii. There is no shipping charges if you are in Hawaii. I'm not shipping this out to anybody that's buying it in the mainland. Um, I'm basically just going to sell this. Uh, I think I already have one interested buyer that's, that wants to pick this up locally. So, I'll be trying to meet up with that person tomorrow. So, so this is my TRX4M, guys. Um, 
This is the latest project that I was working on. I did have SCXs, uh, but the scale of this one and the looks of this body was is much nicer than that. Um, and there's a lot more things that I could add to this just to make it look more realistic. So, yep, I'll be selling this, guys. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you like this video. And we'll see you again. All right.